Hey guys, it's CTHM Productions here, bringing you today something a little different. I know it's been a while since I've been on here, and I'd like to uh, say hello since I've been gone. Uh, this is a project I've been working on recently, and I decided to make. This is the Millet Starving Student Hybrid Headphone Amplifier. As you can see, it uses two vacuum tubes as the primary amplifiers on this uh, unit. And in the rear there, there are two heat sinks. And on the side of these heat sinks, there are two... MOSFET transistors, and this is a unique design. If you know about tubes, you know that they have to be uh, tubes and transistors, and particularly they have to be biased. And this design allows the user to use the output pin on the transistor, and you AC couple that to the headphone output on the front, and the DC voltage from that pin runs the tube heaters. So there are no biasing uh, uh, resistors. It's completely self-biased. There is no adjustment. Uh, it works just like it should. Now this version here is a spin on the original. The original uses a tube that's a 19J6, I believe it is. Uh, unfortunately, those tubes are obsolete and no longer readily available. So this uh, version here is, uh, this is a version that was created on the HeadFi form. And this uses 12 AU7 tubes. I have in there two GE tubes. I believe they're 5963, something like that. Uh, I'll post below what they are. And uh, I also have some RCA clear tops. And it allows it to use a more common tube. The only problem is that there is no PCB available for this build. Actually, there was at one point a guy who had them, but I last I checked, I think he did not have them anymore. So I did this point-to-point -point electronics inside this box. Um, on the website, there are uh, links to the build of materials schematics, pictures, everything you could want. I will link below the website to where you can build this amplifier. And uh, I use the larger heat sink than the stock heat sinks. These heat sinks are about twice as tall. They are exactly the same heat sink as the stock heat sinks. They are literally just taller. Uh, they are exactly the same in all other respects. And I think that's about all there is to say. Uh, it seems to work well. It's got a very crisp tone to it. I use all uh, metal film resistors and electrolytic capacitors with the exception of the output coupling. I used a film capacitor on that uh, to allow for a little better high end and a little more crisp audio. And it sounds amazing. Uh, it does not have any crackles. Uh, you get a little bit of uh, interference from the tubes as, as you would expect, but it sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, sounds great. It's got a little bit of a tube warmth, but not too much at all. Not too much that it's noticeable. Um, I think that's about all there is to say. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'm going to spare you from seeing the inside. This is a, actually a, they call this a stomp box enclosure from a place called Hammond. Hammond, Hammond, something like that. And it's designed for guitar pedals. Makes a nice little enclosure. It's got this durable blue coating on it. I thought it looked very nice. Uh, I went completely retro on this. As you can see, I did not use anything they would not have had in the 60s. That was my goal. Uh, I used aluminum knob instead of plastic. This is an incandescent uh, indicator rather than an LED. Um, everything on this is as period accurate as possible. I know they didn't have the, probably didn't have black anodized heat sinks and transistors in that configuration, but uh, the, the feeling is there. I wanted it to be kind of a retro uh, feeling, of, like this blue kind of looks like blue Bakelite, if you've ever seen that blue Bakelite. Um, so that was the goal. Um, I don't think there's anything else I should include. Like I said, there are schematics where you can build this. Um, you can build the 19J6 version if you'd like. Uh, just be aware that tubes are getting hard to find for that version. Or you can build this 12AU7, and there is another version that uses a different 12 tube. I forget what it is. It uses a different tube. Um, and like I said, the only problem with these, with these configurations is they use point-to-point -point soldering. There is not a PCB available at this time. So... I'll go ahead and fire it up for you here, and uh, we can listen to a couple audio samples uh, in my headphones. Of course, you're not going to be able to hear it very well, um, and it does not give you a feel at all what it sounds like, but uh, it'll give you an overview, an idea. So here we go ahead and fire it up. As you can see, red indicator. You can see our two Peters lighting up in there, and uh, now it's self-biasing. You see the, the two Peters, uh, the glow comes down. Um, these, when it's running, these heat sinks do get very, very hot. You cannot touch them after running it for about a half an hour. Very glad I went with the taller ones. If you are going to do a tube that's 12 volts like this instead of a 19 volt tube, 
highly, highly recommend. Absolutely need bigger heat sinks than what the stock building materials uh, lists. The tubes also get hot, but they're basically a light bulb. Uh, if you're looking into tubes at this point, you should know that they get hot. Um, I think that's about all there is to show. I will go ahead and throw in some audio samples so you can hear the tubes warm up and uh, uh, just a, a general kind of get a feel for what it sounds like. Thank you for watching and hopefully uh, we'll see you in the next video. All right, you are now listening inside the headphones. Now this is not gonna be perfect, but it's the only way I can give you a true feel for like the startup sounds and kind of get a feel for the amplifier. So without further ado, here we go on the startup. And here it's got some background noise and a little bit of a whoosh there when it starts up. And now I'm gonna get my fingers close to the tubes and you can probably, you may be able to pick up a 60 hertz hum. They do weird stuff like this when the tubes are on the outside exposed like this. If you have your phone near them, uh, they'll make a uh, kind of like a microphonic dit -da -dit 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 noise. And uh, I don't think these tubes, the other set of tubes I have, if you hit them, it'll come through. Now you shouldn't hit them anyways, but you know if you tap your desk, if you're typing, sometimes the microphonics will come through. Now here's a little sound sample. Uh, this is some royalty-free music from YouTube. Again, you will not be able to tell how this amp sounds through this. This is just to show you that it works and it is, in fact, a functioning amplifier. And as you can see, I'm going to turn it off here, and the music will go away. And that's about the end of that. Like I said, I will leave everything in the description if you want to buy this amplifier, or build this amplifier rather, buy the pieces. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you so much.